We have some extra banners here if people want to hold them up for this. We're going to do a moment of silence here. I'm uh, John Judge with the Coalition on Political Assassinations. The Kennedy Assassination Research Community has been holding moments of silence in Dallas at 1230 p.m. on November 22nd, starting with Penn Jones, Jr., a Texan who researched the case and exposed many of the violent murders and unusual murders of the witnesses for many years. And he would go out on Dealey Plaza every November 22nd and hold a moment of silence and a moment of remembrance and not let the truth die about what happened November 22nd and who killed Kennedy. He asked me when he got sick. I was going out there with him from 1968 on. He asked me to continue the tradition that we have. But this year, we were intentionally blocked by the Sixth Floor Museum and by the Mayor's Office of Dallas and by Ruth Sharp Altshuler and the Planning Committee from having an event. Uh, we fought back because originally every park in Dallas was closed to First Amendment activity, according to the city attorney, on November 22nd. There was to be no free speech here that day. We fought back, threatened a lawsuit, tried to negotiate with these people, and eventually won some semblance of free speech here in Dallas today so that you could we could leaflet so that we could hold up a banner at least over here there's no free speech inside the zone that they've created but uh, the rest of Dallas is now a free speech zone and so it's possible for people to be out here and to be visible uh, if some of the other COPA people could pick up banners I'd like to hold the banners over here because we've got messages on the blue banners The Coalition on Political Assassinations was formed in 1994. It's a national network of forensic and ballistic and legal experts in this country. Some of the leading forensic pathologists. Our founding president was Cyril Wecht, who just held a conference at his Institute of Forensic Law and Science in Pittsburgh. And we're also academicians and authors and independent researchers. And we look into all the political assassinations, John F. Kennedy, Robert Kennedy, Martin Luther King, Malcolm X, and many others. So we'll hold a moment of silence along with the mayor. We were a little quieter than the mayor, apparently. Um, but they, they're not after a moment of silence. They're after a perpetuity of silence. They want, they want forgetting today. They want, they want us to forget who killed Kennedy or why. What's the new evidence? There's plenty of new evidence. We got 6.5 million pages of records loose under the JFK Records Act. We have a Martin Luther King Records Act in play. We've unearthed a great deal of new history about the Cuban Missile Crisis and, and about, the, uh, about the Bay of Pigs and about the Kennedy administration, but also the new evidence 
backs up Jim Garrison's case in 1967 and the case for conspiracy in the Kennedy assassination. There's new evidence released all the time. There's witnesses that come forward all the time. This is not a mystery that you can't solve in your lifetime. Who killed Kennedy is exactly who you think killed Kennedy, if you have half a brain, if you know anything about America, if you know anything about the history, and what Eisenhower warned about when he went out of office at the end of his term, what was called a military industrial intelligence complex. And that complex, which was funded primarily and helped to fund a new southern rim economy, including Texas, oil and aerospace and munitions and weapons, uh, you know, and, and government contracts rose in this country. And now we live in America under a permanent war economy because John F. Kennedy wanted world peace. John F. Kennedy was pulling out of Vietnam. John F. Kennedy was in restoring relations with Cuba and normalizing them. John F. Kennedy wanted an end to the arms race in the Cold War. John F. Kennedy was supporting independence movements against colonialism in Africa like Lumumba and in Central and South America. John F. Kennedy was going against the entire establishment of the CIA and the Pentagon in what he was doing because he wanted world peace. He wanted to end this nonsense. He didn't, if John F. Kennedy had lived, you wouldn't be spending seven trillion dollars since the end of 9-11 of on defense and on intelligence and on homeland security. You'd be spending it on human needs, on medicine, on, on education. But this whole country was taken over that day by a military coup d'etat. That's who killed John F. Kennedy, a military coup d'etat organized by the Joint Chiefs of Staff. Now, I'm not speculating here. This is not a theory. You start with a theory, and when it's embellished by the facts, it becomes a conclusion. My mother worked for the Pentagon for 30 years, my father and my aunt as well. My mother was the highest paid woman employee of the Pentagon for those years. She was GS-16. My mother was directly under the Joint Chiefs of Staff, Deputy Chief of Staff for Personnel. She was a manpower analyst. Her job was to project the National Annual Draft Call, national annual number of people who would be drafted into the military based on attrition levels and what force level they wanted to be at and what force level they wanted to go to. And she had to have those figures accurate within 100 people every year for a national annual call five years in advance. How many would retire? How many would re-enlist? How many would discharge? If there was a war, they gave her attrition levels. How many would be wounded? How many would be killed? Because they had to know how many they had to pull into the military by the draft in order to keep the system going. And she had to sweat every five years, every year, the five years ahead, the figures that she had come up with, but she got them right. Now my mother told me, after she retired, that for the first time in her career she was told to change her figures in April of 1963 on orders of the White House. That means Kennedy. And the change was a full withdrawal of American troops from Vietnam by the end of 1964. I asked my mother when did they then escalate the war in Vietnam because she had to be among the first to know. She said late November. I said the last week in November. She said the Monday following the Kennedy assassination. I said was it a few more troops and advisors? She said she couldn't believe the figures. The figures that the Joint Chiefs gave her, she took them back up to the Joint Chiefs and she said, these can't be right. And I teased her that that was the first civilian protest of the war in Vietnam. Because I was a Vietnam War protester and my mother thought she was going to lose her security clearance. She was five levels above top security at the Pentagon. She had access to the war room for briefings. She told me that on November 25th, 1963, the day of Kennedy's burial, the Joint Chiefs reversed his policy of withdrawal and told her to project a 10-year war with 57,000 American dead, exactly on target. They know where you're going, you don't. I talked to Strategic Air Command bomber pilots who were in the air at the moment of the Kennedy assassination. They had also been up on the day of the Cuban Missile Crisis. They told me they came within 
30 seconds of failsafe, which is a no return on nuclear war. General LeMay and the Joint Chiefs wanted to go to full-scale nuclear war. They wanted to implement the strategic interoperative plan. That was a line of B-52 bombers taking off from Western Europe and, and Taiwan simultaneously in parallel, flying over the Soviet Union and Cuba, carpet bombing with Hiroshima-sized nuclear weapons. None of us would be here today if John F. Kennedy had not stood up to the Joint Chiefs of Staff. And Curtis LeMay left that meeting saying, we've got to get rid of those sons of bitches, meaning the Kennedy brothers. Who do you think killed Kennedy? Who could, who could do anything like that? These pilots told me they heard chatter on the day of the Kennedy assassination. He had been shot here in Dallas. They figured they'd get orders. They went to get their decrypting books. There was no decrypting book aboard. They landed in Omaha at the SAC base, and everybody else on the shift that hour had no decrypting book aboard their SAC bomber. That's the defense of the United States compromised. My mother and my aunt told me at the hour of the Kennedy assassination, the moment, 12.30 here, 1.30 Eastern time, that moment, all of the federal exchange lines in Washington, D.C., that's the secure lines between federal departments and agencies, went dead for a period of two hours. Pierre Salinger in his book reveals that the plane carrying the cabinet back from Honolulu, where they made the change in the plans for Vietnam, had no decrypting book aboard. Those are the way you give orders to people and can go all the way to nuclear war. When the Kennedy files were released, one of the earliest releases was in the NSA box, and it was called DEFCON Status, November 22, 1963. That's defense condition. Defense condition sits status as five. It goes up to one, which is where you get the nuclear war. CONUS, Continental United States. USURU, U.S. Army in, in Europe. ASEAN, the Asian countries. SOUTHCOM, Central and South America. I saw every sheet for DEFCON November 22. The president has just been killed by parties unknown. Later, a guy's arrested who's supposed to be a communist. Was there a change in the defense condition status that day? No. There was only a change in Vietnam. Vietnam went from five to four, which is listen up, something's going to change. If, they, if it had come from outside the system, they would have been on full defense alert. They would have been escalating. I found out this year from a document released that there was a standing military order on November 22, 1963, that not just for that day, but a standing order at that time, that if the President of the United States was assassinated by foreign sources, meaning communists in those days, that they would implement immediately the strategic interoperative plan and bomb Russia and China. And so that was what was at stake, and that's why I believe they had to get rid of the decrypting books so that they wouldn't go all the way. But the other thing they were doing that day was they were preparing to invade Cuba. They were preparing to kill Fidel Castro and take over in that country. They had troops at military bases on full alert loading onto transport planes to go to Cuba on November 22, 1963. I've talked to these people. You can get Ann Lander's book from the 30th anniversary about where were you and look in the military section. There's reports of it. I talked to a Navy SEAL offshore Cuba, November 22, 63, ready to go in and assassinate Castro when they got the green light. Now, how are they going to invade Cuba without causing a crisis? Under the JFK Assassination Act, we unearthed a document called Operation Northwoods. Operation Northwoods was a joint CIA, Pentagon, and other intelligence agency plan to create, and by create I mean stage, a traumatic incident that would traumatize the American public and to make it plausibly blamable on Fidel Castro. Have riots in Miami that killed people and have anti-Castro Cubans do them and blame them on pro-Castro Cubans. Blow up a ship off Guantanamo Bay and blame it on Castro. Make a fake, fake airline blow up by the Cubans off Cuban airspace and send fake obituaries home to the newspapers to get people excited about it. Blow up John Glenn on the way to the moon. These are the kind of things that they're talking about implementing for North Northwoods. Kennedy turned it down. Kennedy had also stopped the raids on Cuba.
Kennedy had stepped in and stopped the assassination plans, plans against Fidel Castro. He was reaching out to normalize relations with Castro at that time. He broke his plate at a dinner when, Gen when Senator Smathers suggested killing Castro. He said, we'll have no more of that talk. And so that was not the direction he was going, and he turned it down. They came back with a, a revised version, and he fired Lyman Lemnitzer, the head of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, when he came back proposing it again. He didn't want this plan. I would suggest to you that November 22, 63, is the full implementation of Operation Northwoods. The assassination of President Kennedy is a traumatic incident that could be blamed on Castro. How? Because they doubled Oswald in Mexico City at the Cuban and Soviet embassies in the weeks prior to the assassination. They had a fake Oswald go and say that he wanted to meet Castro because they knew they were framing Oswald as a patsy and they could link him to Castro and blame the Kennedy assassination on Castro. And Castro knew this too. He spoke out three days later and said they were setting me up. Why didn't it happen? It didn't happen because the plan was to kill Lee Harvey Oswald at the Texas Theater. And Oswald instead stuck his hand into the breech of the gun. And that's the only place Oswald has any graphite on his hands or his cheeks. He did not fire a weapon of any kind on November 22, 1963. He is not the assassin of John F. Kennedy or anyone else. He was actually naval intelligence, crypto clearance, a fake defector to the Soviet Union, one of nine defectors that went over and came back on the same months. In fact, when Marina Oswald testified to the Warren Commission, they asked her how Oswald got into the Soviet Union. She tells the story of Robert Webster, another of the nine fake defectors, not Oswald's story. She puts an address in Moscow where Webster lived, not Oswald. So she was improperly debriefed, all right? And she's white Russian anti-communist, anti and, and he brought her back out. But he was working for intelligence agencies and informing the FBI. Shanklin, the FBI officer here, who ordered the note that Oswald gave the FBI, torn up and put in the toilet after the assassination. He claimed later, Hostie, another agent, that tore it up, that that was a note threatening the FBI. Well, a note in 63 threatening the FBI would have been on Hoover's desk in three hours. This note was kept, and Shanklin's daughter told me, when I met her by chance, Daddy said that that was a note from Lee Harvey Oswald warning them that Kennedy would be killed in Dallas. That's the reality of who Lee Harvey Oswald is. And if you really know who he is, it solves the assassination. But they knew they would frame him, and they knew they could link him, but they didn't kill him. So then, instead of a dead red that could link it to Castro, they had a talking head who knew a great deal. And they took no minutes. I had an old Dallas cop tell me, we didn't have tape recorders back then. I said, did you have pencils? <laughs> I had two old Dallas cops wander over to me and they said, we hear you don't think Oswald owned a rifle or a pistol. I said, I didn't say that. I said he didn't own the Manly Car Carcano and the gun that they said shot Tippett, which didn't shoot Tippett, and the gun they said shot Kennedy, which didn't shoot Tippett, through a P.O. box that had no signature card. A letter addressed to Oswald that, about that box was in the dead letter. It would have gone to his box if that was his box. It was somebody else's box, but they could link the gun to him. And they said, well, what about that gun he brought in the theater with him? I said, I think you boys brought that in. They looked at each other and grinned. They said, well, maybe we did. And I said, well, that would be police procedure, wouldn't it? So they were meant to kill him there, but they didn't. And Oswald, in that sense, saved Cuba from a raid that day, but couldn't save himself. But the truth of the Kennedy assassination is no mystery. We got the records out. If you want to know it, you can know it. Uh, one book, if you want to just read one book, read Jim Douglas's book, JFK and the Unspeakable, Why He Was Killed and Who Killed Him. That's got the evidence. It's got the reason for it. But he was killed because he was going against a, a rising military, industrial, and intelligence complex that wants this war in permanent, permanent war economy and permanent destabilization of the whole planet. And they want to involve you you know, Jim Douglas spoke last night at a play, and he said, who financed the Kennedy assassination? And he pulled out his wallet, and he said, you did. Who pays for the Pentagon? Who pays for the CIA? Do. You do. Do you want it? Do you want the Pentagon you've got? I'm not saying you can't have an establishment, a defense establishment, but do you want the defense establishment you have that operates in secret, that doesn't let you decide whether to go to war or not? Is that the one you want? 
Is this the CIA you want that buries your history? There's 27 acres of documents buried in Suitland, Maryland, just on military records since 47. There's billions of classified documents, and that's what they want. They want to bury your history, and they want to kill it. And they don't want you to know anything. And that's what this is about. This is the perpetuity of silence. But we're not going to be silent. We're not a dissent. We're 85% of the American public who know that the Warren Commission was wrong. We are the mainstream. We are the majority. The dissent is the American press. The dissent is the people that think Oswald killed Kennedy. That's the dissent. But if you live in the real world and you live with facts, you know that that's not true. And if you want to live in a democracy, you're going to have to face the truth. It's not that you can't know the truth about John F. Kennedy. It's that you don't want to. Martin Schott said the political paralysis in America is based on the fact, based on the fact that we are allowed to believe anything but to know nothing. And when you cannot know, you cannot act. But I suggest to you that you can know. It's not nice to know. It's not pleasant to know. But if you are complicit with that system and you don't change this into a democracy, you'll never have anything resembling one. And we're in a very dark period now. The lie has persisted for a long time. But the truth is there, and it's knowable. No more lies! No more lies! I agree, no more lies, but also, what about the truth? Just because somebody tells you that the government is lying to you, it doesn't mean that they're telling you the truth. You have to do real research. Not just look up something on the web, or listen to what one person says or tells you, you have to do real research, and that's what we've done. We have a conference all weekend at the Aloft Hotel with the best new research on Kennedy, on Robert Kennedy, on Martin Luther King, on Malcolm X. It's over at the Aloft. We have some of the best researchers of the last 50 years, and you can come and find out more about it if you want to. We're the Coalition on Political Assassinations. I, of late, I've been quoting Bob Dylan in the last lines of a song called All Along the Watchtower. There must be some way out of here, said the joker to the thief. There's so much confusion. We can't get no relief. The businessmen, they drink my wine. The plowmen dig my earth. None of them along the line know what any of it is worth. Well, no need to get excited now, the thief he kindly spoke. There are many of those among us who think that life is but a joke. But you and I, we've been through that, and that is not our fate. So let us not speak falsely now. The hour's getting late. 